Congratulations. You are being rescued. Please do not resist. We have a massive amount of news to cover today. The developers have announced the release date for Stellaris The Machine Age. They've also announced two new DLC along with giving us a feature list of what is coming in those DLC. And if that wasn't enough, we're also getting a new trailer for the Endgame Crisis coming with The Machine Age along with some new details on that Endgame Crisis. And let me tell you, this Endgame Crisis is not like the other ones you've met before. The opening is, to quote the developers, decidedly not about combat. Also, Rick the Cube is real. I repeat, Rick the Cube is real. All of that and more, let's dive in. The release date for The Machine Age, the next DLC for Stellaris, has been set. It is Tuesday, May the 7th. Currently, that's in just over four weeks' time. We also now have a price point announced. For those of you that were worried, honestly, I can say most of your concerns can be laid to rest with regard to the pricing. The DLC is now available for pre-purchase for $24.99, that's dollars, and I believe it'll be the same amount in euros, meaning we've only had a $5 or five euro increase in the price of a DLC expansion. For those of you that were reasonably worried that this DLC might come out at $30 or possibly even crazily $35, it will not. It will just be $25. That is a slight increase compared to what we had, you know, eight years ago, but 25% over eight years isn't that terrible. I think we can all stomach this price change, to be honest. There's also more information though, as you probably guessed from the thumbnail, we are getting some information about the next two DLC after the Machine Age as well. Based on the popularity of Crusader Kings Chapter 3, the developers have decided to celebrate their 8th anniversary by offering a similar expansion pass including all of the major Stellaris releases of the year for $39.99, which comes out to over a 20% discount. Interestingly, that's also the same price as the base game. Just a fun little fact for you. There's a chance that the developers might experiment with some other ideas that might or might not come out later this year, but Stellaris Season 8 will include all of the major releases of 2024. On top of that, players that have a Stellaris expansion subscription will have access to Rick the Cube and the rest of Stellaris Season 8 as they release while your subscription is running. And there's a note here about not being able to purchase things from the storefront if you have uh, the subscription and need to turn it on and off. If you want more info on that, check out the dev diary. I'm not going to go into it. All right. Stellaris Season 8 includes the following content. Day 1 Unlock Rick the Cube Species Portrait. It turns out that even though Rick the Cube was announced on April the 1st, it was in fact no joke. Unlocked immediately with the purchase of Stellaris Season 8, this machine species portrait is a cube and definitely not a human. Behold those lines, those flat sides, those runes, and tremble before their ineffable polygonal nature. Okay, um, interesting. I like that we can actually get access to Rick the Cube. Rick is kind of cool, I suppose. It's an interesting species portrait. I'm glad they're giving it away for free as part of the Season 8 pass, I guess, or should we factor that into the cost of this Season 8 pass? If, you, if we do, then it looks like my dev diary about microtransactions might be getting scarily accurate. You can buy a single portrait. Um, oh, good God. Of course, the Season 8 pass will include the major expansion, The Machine Age, coming May 7th at $25 if you don't get it through the expansion pass. We've all been reading the dev diaries, or at least I hope you've been listening to them along with me, and thus we should all have a good understanding of what The Machine Age includes, but we're going to go through it in detail. Now, interestingly here, they're also including what the name of not just the new Endgame Crisis is, but also the new Player Crisis. So we will check out that as well. The Machine Age is the heart of the Stellaris Season 8. This major expansion allows you to explore cyberpunk fantasies of technological augmentation and digitization of consciousness. 
expanding the possibilities offered in game by the cybernetic and synthetic ascension paths. Honestly, I think this is probably the DLC everyone has been most hyped for for uh, quite a while. You can address the moral and social changes that communing with the machine brings to your spacefaring empire and face a new great threat looming over the galaxy. Or become a new threat yourself as you tear through time and space to shape reality in your image. Oh my goodness, spoilers for next week's Dev Diary. Right, the Machine Age expansion includes individualistic non-Gestalt machine empires, Gestalt machine intelligence empires, also unlocked by the Synthetic Dawn story pack, three new origins, Cybernetic Creed, Synthetic Fertility, Arc Welders, we've covered those, six new civics, Guided Sapient, Natural Design, Obsessional Directive, that's the paperclip thing, Protocol Droids, Tactical Cogitators, and Augmentation Bazaars. Two mid-game structures, the Arc Furnace and Dyson Swarms, we've covered all this. Three new machine ascension paths, modularity, nanotechnology, and virtuality, we've covered all of that. Cybernetic and synthetic ascension, also unlocked by Utopia. Exploration of the effects of cyberization or synthesization on society with advanced government forms for those who complete it, we've looked at that. New species traits for cyborgs, machines, and robots, we've kind of looked at that, but I think there's a lot more to see there. Cybernetic portraits that change based on the advancement through cyberization. Now, importantly, the game director shared on Discord a couple of days ago a picture of an empire which had humans in it. And, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting a new human portrait. One that can have cyborg parts on their faces. This is awesome. I cannot wait to get my hands on it in game. We've also got synthetic portraits with both organic and synthetic variants that change based on synthesization, usable by either organics or machines. So you can have kind of organic looking synthetics probably nowadays. Also two new ship sets, diplomatic rooms and city sets, a new become the crisis path, Cosmo Genesis. Now let's explore that briefly. So Cosmo meaning galactic, Genesis meaning creation. I believe this might allow us to uh, reshape the galaxy in our image, is what has been said here. So probably this is about galactic wide terraforming. Maybe though, we're actually changing the fundamentals of space and time. We know that there is a mega structure that comes with this, which is all about uploading our pops or plugging our pops in. That's part of the original trailer, the mega structure that looks like something out of uh, the Matrix. Now, as we pop those pops in, uh, if you'll pardon the pun there, you will end up getting more and more research, probably towards pushing the boundaries of your physics research, and thus allowing you to reshape reality, I'm guessing. Finally, the new endgame crisis is the Synthetic Queen. Don't worry, we're getting loads of information about that at the end, later on, once we've gone through the next two uh, DLC teasers, along with a video about this new endgame crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to announce to you for the first time ever the next DLC coming after this one, coming in quarter three of 2024. That's very much hot on the heels of the machine age. We have Stellaris Cosmic Storms. Retail price at $12.99. I assume you'll have regional equivalents that are the same. And this will be a mechanical expansion. A strange galactic phenomenon has been observed in the galaxy. Cosmic storms have begun sweeping throughout the systems of the galaxy. Check the forecast. Prepare your empire to weather this new threat and leverage the possibilities these storms give you as they weaken your enemies. Discover multiple types of cosmic storms that travel from system to system in the galaxy, wreaking havoc or bringing powerful bonuses on empires throughout the cosmos. Discover new technologies allowing you to forecast and influence the direction of these storms. And play with new civics and a new origin featured around taking advantage of this mysterious galactic phenomenon. Cosmic storms will include 8 galactic storms with unique visual effects, 1 new origin, 3 new civics, 2 new relics, and 2 new precursor story arcs. Now I'm going to assume that those precursor story arcs means that we have existing precursors with different stories, though it could mean two entirely new precursors. We will have to find out. Galactic Storms does sound interesting. Um, I hope actually this is something you can turn off. 
If you can't turn it off in the, the game settings, I guess you could disable the DLC, but maybe you'd like to have the relic and the precursors without having the storms turning on. I almost wish sometimes that you could turn storms off in the mid game, um, but that's by the by, I suppose. Interesting, I I'm confused about this DLC, somewhat excited. I'd like to see what the storms are going to do, what kind of direction they're going in. That um, That is something we're going to have to watch for and uh, and find out more on let me know your thoughts on cosmic storms the next next dlc in the comments below and if you're enjoying this video please storm that like button in quarter four 2024 we have the next 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 dlc coming stellaris the grand archive this is a story pack and will retail at the same price as first contact not astral planes but first contact of 15 dollars or 15 euros equivalent i think that's a good price point let's dive in and find out what it does the grand archive is vast and full of wonders and it is up to you to fill its halls with the records of the unique life forms and marvels you meet in the galaxy construct a new megastructure and collect exotic specimens from your spacefaring adventures what military applications might await you and what unique forms might you construct from the specimens you find is up to you. In the Grand Archive Story Pack, you will collect specimens from throughout the galaxy and discover technologies allowing you to genetically modify the galaxy's indigenous space fauna. And then you can breed these creatures to further your own agenda. Oh god. The Grand Archive includes a new megastructure, the Grand Archive. We can see here that looks like it's something to do with uh, putting these species in it also looks a little bit reminiscent of a habitat so i'm guessing it is basically a giant zoo uh, maybe it's going to grant us some amenities and research along with some other options 200 specimens to collect so they've really expanded upon that specimen collection event chain which used to just have six specimens now there's 200 ladies and gentlemen if your favorite part of stellaris was the specimen event chain then oh boy we've got the dlc for you a vivarium with space fauna capturing mechanics, a hatchery, starbase, and cloning facilities to alter space fauna and use them as fleets. This actually sounds really cool. I'm really interested in being able to play an empire that decides to make use of the environment around you. Basically, like the humans of old, you take some animals, let's say horses, and you breed them until they are beasts of war, weapons of war. You can ride them into battle. The same is basically going to be true of the other space fauna in the game, but not just the space fauna you know, Bubbles is still there, but we have two new types of space fauna coming, Void Worms and Cuthaloids. Not to be confused with Cuckaloids or anything like that, but these are Cuthaloids. A new mid-game crisis, the Void Worm Plague, is also coming very, very soon. It's cool to see a plague coming in as a crisis, I'm assuming this is also going to have some effect on your pops, but the plague will start in the void worms and then start transferring over to your pops. Hopefully it's some sort of science-based plague that we have to work together with the galaxy to, uh, to overcome. Maybe we can quarantine. I'm, I'm getting some hopefully strong flashbacks and vibes from the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. I, I'm assuming it's going to be something plague-related like that and very, very unique and new. I'm, I'm quite excited for that. Two new origins are coming along with two new tradition trees. All of that will be available if you grab the Season 8 Pass. You'll get Rick the Cube, the Machine Age, uh, Cosmic Storms and the Grand Archive for DLC all in one at an apparent reduction of 20%. That is assuming Rick the Cube is free though. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what is going on there. If it's not free, that means Rick will qualify as a micro transaction oh my god um yeah yeah i no, no one could have predicted this at all definitely not through art anywho i'm a little intrigued about this concept the the, the season pass i like that they're announcing the dlc early like this they're giving us a roadmap i think that's really fun i hope they do the same with a possible season nine next year if the game is you know still going by that point and, and we're still getting lots of good updates this gives people some uh, options. They get to know what's coming, whether or not they want to spend their hard earned money on this DLC or wait for a possibly better DLC, a DLC more aligned with their playstyle, what excites them later on in the year. 
Previously, that has been kind of impossible. You've had to take it on a DLC by DLC basis, which means that, yeah, you basically have no idea whether this is the one you buy this year or you wait for the next one. And speaking of discounts, I have a much larger discount than 20% you can get your hands on today. Until the end of April, if you sign up with Humble Choice for only 10 euros or your regional equivalent, you'll get your hands on $303 worth of games, including, but not limited to, Victoria 3, The Callisto Protocol, Humankind Definitive Edition, and Terraformers. By following the link down in the description, you can get your hands on this great deal, support this channel, and support charity. On top of that, you'll also get 20% off on thousands of games on the Humble Store, along with 5% of your purchases going to charity. The best bit is, when you cancel your subscription or finish your subscription, you will still keep all of the games that you picked up because those games, Victoria 3, The Humankind, etc., are forever not just while you are subscribed. Again, that link is down in the description below. There we have our first introduction to the Synthetic Queen. Uh, the devs wanted to introduce us to the Synthetic Queen themselves. Unfortunately, that Fallen Empire beat everybody to it. Now, they didn't do very well. It looks like all of their fleet pretty much got wiped away through being turned into dust, I think. Yikes. Um, looks like we've got some Rose Tyler Bad Wolf level nonsense going on here, and we are the Daleks in this situation. Definitely not... Excellent. If you've got no idea what I'm on about, go and watch series one of the new Doctor Who from 2004 or five or whatever it is. For the love of God, go and watch Doctor Who. Anyway, um, so let's find out a bit more about this new crisis. Not every existential threat is overtly hostile or even desires to harm you. In-house, the developers have always loved their rogue servitors. The idea of a powerful AI that somehow turns on its creators, not in a violent or destructive way, but out of a misguided sense of purpose. They wanted to do something that felt both apocalyptic, but not inherently militant. A crisis that wasn't exclusively about shooting something on first contact. The first phases of this crisis are decidedly non-combat. I think that is awesome. It's great to start going in a direction with the crisis, the end game crisis, which isn't just point and shoot. The, the Terminids, the uh, Terminids, no, the Tyranids, no, crap, what are they called? The Pretherans, sorry, goodness me. I forget, all the same names really, aren't they? The Pretherans show up and what do we do? We shoot them. The uh, Unbidden show up and what do we do? We shoot them. The Reapers, I mean the Contingency, show up, and what do we do? We shoot them. Starting off without shooting is going to feel really weird, but I think it's a cool direction to go, and I'm hoping that the other mid-game crisis, the one which will be coming with the Grand Archive, the Voidworm Plague, is similarly also not about shooting. How might an all-powerful being react to the directive to eliminate suffering? Obviously, because this is Stellaris, the antagonist is going to take her answer way, way too far. What happens next is then up to the player. Will you try to oppose her directly or play the part of a loyal pupil? This all came together as a terrifying, driven entity. 
there are some very obvious spiritual and historical influences in her design, and philosophical ideas regarding the nature of suffering and awareness are woven throughout her narrative. Expanding upon some of the interactions originally created in Galactic Paragons, all, and, and the devs really do mean all, of your conversations with the Synthetic Queen will have full generated audio voiceovers, so you will hear everything she has to say. The audio director Ernesto Lopez has a bit to say about how they went about it. Designing the voice for Synthetic Queen was an entertaining adventure. Whilst they had access before to using advanced text-to-speech to do prototypes and characters, this time they tried to use the tool like a music synthesizer. They created multiple takes, arranged them, and compiled them, creating an overall good result. They are excited to create an AI character with an AI voice, since this would allow some creative leeway. If the results felt odd or non-human, that could fit the character perfectly. But also, when the results had specific emotion, that helped the developers to create what they believe is a fantastic character and an enjoyable and exciting narrative arc for players that have been waiting for a new and exotic crisis. The developers overall are extremely happy with how all of this has turned out. It takes encounters with her to another level. The Synthetic Queen gave them an opportunity to build upon existing stories of the Fallen Empires and they will be answering some questions about the ancient past. They don't want to spoil too much about her story right now, but they are really looking forward to seeing us meet her. We also here get to have a look at the Synthetic Queen ship set. I don't believe this is a ship set available to players, this is a new Crisis ship set. Of course, she still has ships, and I'm assuming that looks like a starbase at the back there. It looks like we'll still be having to fight her in the normal way. I must admit, I love her main ship design. It's very kind of animalistic. It reminds me a bit of a manta ray. I almost wish we had some designs for ships or ship sets that looked like that. Kind of a bit like um, in Atlantis, how all of the Atlantean ships are based on uh, aquatic creatures, especially the Leviathan. God, I love that movie. Anyway, that ship set design would be great to have woven in. But anyway, this is the Synthetic Queen's ship set. We know, therefore, that we will probably be shooting at her at some point if she has a variety of ships. If she just had the one ship, I guess we could surmise that no, there's not going to be any long protracted space battles. But with a fleet of ships, with a whole cacophony of designs at her disposal, or at least, you know, there's at least six here, including the fighters, that's seven, we'll probably be fighting her in space at some point. There you have it though, the new Crisis is not the Hunters, it doesn't seem to have anything to do with Ultima Vigilis that was on the outside of the galaxy, it seems to basically be an all-powerful AI construct that has gone a bit mad, was locked away for a while and now has returned to rogue servitor their way up in the galaxy. This is not the culture though, DJ, and that doesn't make the culture the bad guys, just need to clarify there, just because the Synthetic Queen is the bad guy. Anyway, next week we're going to be looking at the new Become the Crisis Path in the Machine Age, Cosmo Genesis. If you've enjoyed this video, but you'd like some more information on what the new civics and megastructures coming in the Machine Age are, then click the video on screen now.